goodness. Splatoon 3's announcement is now a year old. Isn't that crazy? One time we were looking at little buddy and now we're <laughs> still waiting to learn more about little buddy, admittedly. We'll be playing it within another half a year. Last year I talked about if Splatoon 3 could successfully implement a battle royale mode, but what I didn't consider was if Salmon Run could possibly fill that role. Now that we know that Salmon Run is back on the table, why don't we dive into the idea and see if it actually is possible? Battle Royale modes are meant to be you, and possibly your teammates, against everybody else. Imagine a large, expansive Salmon Run map where you're given a weapon specifically from the current Salmon Run rotation, and then uh, that's it. You're off. Splatoon already lends itself to team play, so it's not hard to say that you could probably play this in teams of two or four or just go at it alone. You start at a point on the map of your choosing from that super cool new helicopter that Grisco now owns, and as time goes on, more and more salmonids start to inundate the map. You know, maybe you'll choose a place to drop that'll be cool near the start, but due to the waves of salmon growing closer and closer, you're forced to move towards the center. And you know, while most salmonids start at the ocean and move their way to land, we've already seen in the Salmon Run Next Wave trailer, the development team is looking to kinda shake that formula up with new bosses like the fish stick that can land anywhere. Your goal is to not only survive the ever-increasing bands of salmon, but to also splat anybody else on the map. After all, it is a battle royale. The winner is the last cephalopod standing, who then gets picked up by Grizzco and goes back home first. Yay! A little harsh for everyone else, but hey, you signed up for it. Don't worry, Grizzco will be back for everyone else after giving the winner a hefty reward. Sending in so many Inklings and Octolings into the fray at the same time guarantees for Mr. Grizz that there will be plenty of salmonid splatting and lots of egg collecting going on. So why wouldn't he? Collecting golden eggs in this mode could give you some kind of temporary boost. Maybe you don't start with any specials, but collecting a set number of golden eggs and delivering them to one of the baskets scattered around the map will give you one to work with. It's safe to say that too many specials could pose a pretty big problem, so let's cap that at like two. Maybe one special at three eggs, and one more special at a total of six eggs. Anyone who sees you will be able to see the special pouches on your hat, so be careful walking around too much to avoid becoming a high priority target. I do wonder if you would even want players to be able to use those specials on each other in this. I feel like that could be too broken. Maybe they'd just be for the salmonids. That might make it a little more fair. Could there be other disadvantages to splatting too many boss salmonids? When you beat a boss salmonid and those golden eggs drop down, it kind of emits a pretty visible flash of light, and you'll probably have given away your position instantly. Or, to go back to the fish stick one more time, if any player saw you up there, it might not end too well. But what if it was your only choice? If you're taking excessive damage from enemy salmonids, better to get spotted and run away than to lose all your health on the ground. And honestly, I just think that Salmon Run with a Battle Royale would be fun. <laughs> would you want to hoard salmon eggs for specials? Or would you want to try and stay hidden as possible to try and be that last squid standing? It would be inevitable that you have to fight at least some salmonids, but some players might want to minimize their footprint by being constantly on the move, hungrier for kills against opponents than against salmonids. One strat that a more sneaky player might want to implement, maybe they'd want to follow the waves of salmonids that are following around other opponents. After all, don't forget that salmonids can sniff you out, so even if you're hiding, they'll probably find somebody eventually. If you see those salmonids locked on some other target in the distance, you might know where to go if you're looking to hunt down another player instead of trying to wait down the timer. Speaking of a timer, I don't think it'd be that bad if this salmon run was, let's say, 5 or 10 minutes long. I think that's pretty okay, especially seeing how salmon run already is decently long in comparison to the average Splatoon 2 game. I think that if it was at most 10 minutes, but the mode tended to get very hard in those last few minutes, I think it'd be fine. One of the big grabs of Splatoon is how short the matches are, so you want to make sure that we cap this at a pretty decent amount. That's so if people only have time for, let's say, one game, they can still get away with that before they gotta turn off their Switch. 
What about ink colors? To fix the ink issue, we can make sure the salmonids are always green. You know, like usual. Then you can have a second ink color, and then any other opponent on the screen could have a third color. Hopefully this can minimize issues that could arise from color blindness. Another thing some players like during a battle royale is the ability to swap weapons. Currently, when you get splatted, you turn into a little life ring, right? What if, whenever a player has despawned, aka, you know, they're not coming back, the life ring remains? Any alive player could walk up to the ring and swap their weapon for the one present in the ring. Be careful though, this means that someone else could later come on by and take your weapon. Maybe it wasn't good in your hands, but just watch if you happen to give somebody their favorite weapon on accident. Imagine what could happen when the salmon rotation of the day is all random, meaning you have no way to predict what weapons could be floating out there. In fact, you might be taking a risk running over to that life ring if there's a lot of salmonids floating around. There could be all kinds of strategies for weapon swapping though. Maybe you aren't afraid to make that dangerous journey into an approaching horde of salmonids for a quick swap before that life raft gets stampeded by salmon. Think you have a weapon that a lot of people are good at, but you know, you just aren't? You could try to make a quick swap and then run for it. <laughs> but what about ties? What if two players are just so good at salmon at escaping, they outlive the expectations of the timer? This could be where those golden eggs can come into play even more, and if needed, even the regular power eggs. If two or more players decide to stall each other out, the player with the largest number of golden eggs could just become the winner. That makes collecting more eggs even more important than ever if you ask me. Players in the Splatoon community are always looking for ways to do ranked-ish matches without having any kind of actual ranking associated with it, so this could be a great way to go about it. You could play against other players without having too much stress of being like, oh no, I'm gonna disappoint my teammates or something, because you won't have to worry about that. You're either playing alone or you're playing with a little group of friends against a whole bunch of people. I think it'd be fun, but what do you think? Would you play a Sam Run Battle Royale? I think it'd be a really fun alternative to the normal games that we see in Splatoon. And honestly, unless you have very experienced players, I doubt that most matches would make it to the timer. We know even today that a lot of people still struggle with Salmon Run, because it can be difficult to move around efficiently, especially with so many enemies all over the place. A lot of Splatoon revolves around ink management, and when that gets taken away from you, things go bad really fast. That's why you'd probably see a lot of players get clowned on as soon as the salmonids start to stack up. A mode like this might help people get better at ink management, might get better at movement and aim, and I think it'd just be dummy fun. If you liked this idea and you want to add to it, feel free to comment your thoughts below. Or if you want to hear me talk more about Splatoon 3, you like Splatoon 2 content, or you just want to see what videos I put out in the future, please subscribe for more. Thank you for listening. And watch out for the salmonids! Ooh.